Welcome to the Build Your Life Coaching Biz podcast, where you get to learn how to become a professional life coach and start an online coaching business from scratch. I'm your host, Krista Kathleen, a professional certified coach and spiritual business mentor. In 2016, I got divorced and left my full-time job as a registered nurse and decided to bravely answer my calling of becoming a life coach so I could help to change lives as I traveled around the world. And now I want to help you discover your purpose too. Having the freedom and flexibility to be your own boss and make as much money as you want right from your laptop will be one of the best gifts you ever give to yourself, your family, and the world. In these episodes, I'll give you real coaching combined with proven strategies and spiritual practices in order to help build your dream coaching business that feels perfect for you. Well, hello, my coaching family. So today's episode is going to be a little sad, probably. There's probably going to be some heavy emotions. There might be some crying on my end, which I'll let you know why in a little bit. And, you know, it's always a little scary being this vulnerable, not knowing who's going to listen to this. But I also trust the universe, and the universe was telling me to record this today and share with you guys what's going on and uh, tie an important message to it. I think that's going to be really relevant for a lot of life coaches right now. And I also think that right, our world and social media is filled with people who are only showing the happiest moments of their life. And so we're not getting a complete picture of people's lives. And we're thinking that everybody's life is perfect except our own. And then when we struggle and we have messy setbacks and failures, we think we're the only one going through it. And that there's something wrong with us when in reality, like there's so many other people that are going through similar things that we're going, but we just don't know because people don't share and they don't talk about it. So I'm really committed to sharing about the things in my life that aren't the glossy highlight reels. So you guys don't feel so alone, you know, if or when it happens to you and to show you guys how I show up continuing to run my coaching business, running the Born to Coach Chain Academy, even when life is messy and life gives me a shit storm. And I mean, life is, I've I've just realized this recently that like life is one challenge after the next with like little golden nuggets of amazing moments in between. (laughs) But that's like how, that's how it feels to me right now. It's like, okay, what's the next challenge going to be? Um, Which is not a bad thing, right? Challenges really can help us to grow and thrive. (coughs) Excuse me. And so, yeah, Um, so I don't want you guys to wait for your life to be perfect, air quote, perfect. Um, And I don't want you to be telling yourself that like my life has to be perfect in order to be someone's life coach or to run a successful life coaching business because like life is going to be happening in the background regardless. And if you wait for your life to be perfect, you're you're probably never going to start running your coaching business because you know that that perfect time just doesn't come there are definitely like more ideal times to start things than other times but yeah please don't get stuck in that trap of saying well like i need to have my shit figured out first or i need to do x y and z before i start building a coaching business or before i start helping others like you can One of my most favorite quotes is like, you can be a work in progress. Actually, I don't even know what the exact quote is. It's like, oh, you can be a masterpiece and a work in progress at the same time. I think that's what it is. And I really like that because I think it just, it gives, it gives me permission that like things can feel really messy, but I can still be really successful. I can still help others. And I can be figuring it all out at the same time. 
So, all right. So you guys are probably wondering what the heck I'm talking about right now. And, and just so you know, too, the reason all this came about was I was talking with my uh, newest support coach, Valerie, who is coaching, personally coaching my students for the fall Born to Coach Training Academy that just started this week. Um, it's a new feature that I'm adding. So each of my students can get more individualized one-on-one -on -one support in the program and they can practice working with a professional coach. So they really understand and um, feel what it's like to receive coaching. And then it's so much easier to sell coaching and provide coaching for your clients when you work with a coach yourself. And she was messaging with me and I told her what was going on in my life. And she's like, how the heck did you create the mindset to show up you know, for your students this week? And, and not only am I working with the the fall, the new fall class, I'm still working with my spring class because they're graduating this month. So I have two classes going on at the same time. And like things are messy in my life right now. I, like Kyle and I are trying to figure out what's going on with our relationship. I think we're, we're going to be transitioning more into co-parenting and not so much like romantic partnership anymore. And then something else that I didn't tell you guys, because, you know, I was going to be waiting to make the, the or share the good news at the appropriate time was I was pregnant and we were trying for baby number two. I did my ayahuasca ceremony. And that's what I was waiting for and um, got pregnant on the first try, which was really cool. I was not expecting to get pregnant that fast, but I did. And it kind of felt like something was off and different because I didn't really feel nauseous. I didn't really feel tired like I did with my first two pregnancies. Um, but I figured everything was fine and I was having a lot of other different symptoms. Um, and I'm not going to go into, I don't want this whole episode to be about, so to put in a nutshell, like I'm having a miscarriage. This is my first time going through something like this. And I don't want this whole episode to be about the miscarriage because I am going to do a whole episode about the miscarriage because miscarriages is one of those like taboo topics that people don't talk about. And so as a result, nobody, like I used to be a labor and delivery nurse. I like for years had studied everything there is to know about pregnancy and what I've learned about miscarriages over the past couple of weeks has blown my mind that I did not even know about was not aware of. So I'm like, man, if I was in the industry, if I was in that field and I am this shocked about miscarriages, then like, I know I need to share my story and I know I need to share what's been happening with other people because, you know, one in four pregnancies results in miscarriage. And that's a really, really high percentage. So I promise you in a couple of weeks, I will have a full episode about what this experience has been like with me when it's all said and done because it's it's still happening right now and you know that's one of the things I learned is a miscarriage is not like a okay you bleed and then it's over like it's it's a process that can take weeks which is crazy like I had no idea so yeah so my relationship is messy um you know going through a miscarriage feels really messy and but life goes on and life doesn't stop for our messes. And I know that this is something that a, a lot of new life coaches are worried about of like, you know, I'm sure you're asking yourself the question of like, how do I help others when my life feels like a shit show? <laughs> and you can, you can help others. And the last time I really felt like this was right after I had gone through my divorce and my job loss. And I decided to enroll into coach training because I was, I decided I wanted to become a life coach. And I was, you know, going through that same thought process of like, man, I feel so called to help others. I really want to like turn my pain into purpose. I want to do something with all these like hard life experiences that I've been given. But like, I don't, I don't know if I can help other people when I feel like I can like kind of barely help myself right now. And I don't think, you know, that's not a bad way of thinking at all. But then I just remember being like, well, it's 
you know, I kind of started going in the direction of like, well, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And so I was like, I just got my divorce settlement. I have this money. I'm going to use it to enroll in coach training. And I'm going to use my coaching business as a way to heal, as a way to process. You know, I, I was like, I just have a feeling these people are going to understand what I've been through. And maybe they've been through similar situations and that like I can show up in pain i can show up healing and then that's okay and it's a safe place to do so and i was right and i just remember like working on my coaching business that first year after the aftermath of the divorce and job loss and i was so grateful for it because it really gave me like this beautiful distraction to like take moments to step away from all the pain and fully focus on something that I was creating for my future. And I found that when I would coach others or when I would work on my coaching business, that it was really grounding and it was really healing for me and that I would always like walk away feeling better. And so I I formed that relationship with my business early on that my coaching business doesn't have to add to my mess. It doesn't have to add to my pain in life, but it can actually help to heal me faster. And so that's what I always encourage a lot of my clients and students to do that when they start saying yes to becoming a life coach and, and yes to, you know, working on their coaching business. And then all of a sudden like life throws you these curveballs because life tends to do that. And, that's where we work on the mindset first and we really work on like, well, what is your relationship with your coaching business? Because if you just view your coaching business as one more, as like a stressor in your life, as a source of stress, then you're not going to want to continue it while you're going through this stress. So that's a problem. But if you see your coaching business as a way to heal or it's, it's healing for you, then you're going to continue to say yes, and you're going to continue to choose it, and you're going to continue to show up for it, even when life is hard and messy. And so that's what I was telling my support coach this week when she said, you know, how the heck are you showing up for all your students right now while you're going through this really sad and hard thing? And I was like, well, uh, to be honest, like I was I was a little nervous about that. Um, and I was, you know, for a moment, I was like, am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to be able to show up while I'm going through all this? And I was like, well, I have students depending on me. And I know I'm the only one running the Board of Coach Training Academy right now and, and running my coaching business right now. And eventually I'll have trainers under me, but I I don't. Um, and so I was like, you know, I I have to put on like my game face and I have to show up no matter what. And it doesn't mean that I like have to lie. Like I was honest with my students and I even canceled one of my group coaching calls on the day when the bleeding started um, with the, was the bleeding was the worst. And I really was like, okay, I know this is happening now. I know that I'm losing this pregnancy. And I just was like, I can't, I can't show up in this moment. Um, but all, you know, and I think that's okay to do that sometimes that, I mean, you don't want to like constantly be canceling your commitments because then you're going to lose the trust of your clients. But sometimes there's, there's times where it happens. Like I've had coaches in the past where right before, like an hour before a call, they'll get a really bad migraine. And they're like, you know, I'm so sorry to do this, but I have to cancel today. I have this migraine. I can barely get out of bed. I want to be there for you, but I just, I can't in this moment. So, um, you know, is it okay if we reschedule a call? Like if that was constantly happening, I might be frustrated and upset, but like every once in a while, yeah, you know what? It happens and it's okay. And it's not the end of the world. Um, so yeah, there was a call that I had to cancel this week. And normally I don't do that. Like I take my commitments really seriously and try to show up no matter what, but I just, I couldn't in that moment. So I wanted to be honest and I wanted to honor what was happening and everyone was really supportive and sent me really sweet, you know, emails and I still need to get back and reply to those emails. But, um, I just really, I, I leaned on my community 
I really leaned on my community, coaching community during that. And um, their support really helped me through that hard time. And then for the rest of the times that I needed to coach and show up this week, I, you know, I would take a couple minutes before the call and I would like light my candle and sage the room and, you know, pull an Oracle card and, and like, just really just get, just give myself permission to put everything that was happening aside in my life. And it actually felt really good to do that because I was like, you know what, I need a break right now. I don't want to think about what's next. I don't want to think about how long it's going to take me to start to get pregnant again and start trying for baby number two. I don't want to think about how long this miscarriage is going to take. So I was actually like grateful for the distraction. And it was so nice to like for that hour to just be doing what I love. And I love to teach. I love to train. I love to mentor. I love to coach. And after the calls, I would just feel so much more grounded and centered and like, okay, I got this. And so that's, that was the mindset that I really created this week um, to help me get through it. And and I'm going to be honest, like this really was, it was a really, really tough week and, you know, the pain's not over. And um, I've already done a therapy session around this situation and I'm going to definitely do some more. And I joined a a pregnancy loss support group. I was blown away by how many free support groups are online for different, you know, life scenarios. And I'm just doing what I can on my end to support myself and take care of myself. And that's what every coach needs to do. Um, We spend, you know, so many days a week supporting others and we need to make sure we're refilling our own cup. So I'm really making it a priority that I'm scheduling coaching calls and therapy calls and joining support groups. So that way I can keep, you know, just feeling my feelings and nurturing myself during this time. So that way I can keep holding space and being there for my students. And this is definitely a practice. Um, This is something that, you know, taking me a couple years to, be able to do this, uh, but I trust myself. I really, that's one of the beautiful things about working with a coach, receiving coaching is you really learn to trust yourself. And I trust myself that I can go through really hard things and that uh, I like, as my therapist put it in one of our sessions, I can survive hard feelings, right? Um, and it doesn't mean that the world has to end for me, or it doesn't mean that I can't keep showing up and helping others. And that I can be going through a miscarriage and I can still coach people or I can still train my students. And it does, I'm going to be honest, like it does sound weird to say that out loud, but I do believe that I can hold space for both. Um, That, you know, I can be sad and I can be processing this, but then I can also still be taking care of my family. I can still be eating healthy. I can still be taking care of my son. I can still be running the Born to Coach Training Academy. Like it's not, life is not black or white. And I think that's sometimes how we think about it. I remember after going through my divorce and of course, like it was devastating. It was really sad, even though we both wanted it. I mean, there's right. There's just so much grieving that has to happen around that. And I remember like someone coming up to me and saying, like, you look, even though you're going through a divorce, like, you look really good right now. Like, you're still working out. You're still eating healthy. You're still dressing up. Like, I don't think I've ever seen someone going through a divorce, like, look like you. (laughs) I was like, I don't know if this is a compliment or not. (laughs) I'll take it. Um, And I remember just feeling kind of confused, like, well, why wouldn't I, I still keep taking care of myself? Like, just because I'm going through something really hard in life, like, I want to still work out, working out helps to relieve the stress. I want to still like dressing up helps me to feel better and helps me to be in a better mood for the day. Um, I've just learned how to have tools in life. So that way, I don't have to resort to other things that maybe people normally do. Like, I don't want to resort to drinking and numbing away my feelings or taking drugs or doing 
abusive behaviors like to myself that's not going to be good for my physical health my mental health like I've just decided that a long time ago that I don't want to live that way and I don't have to live that way and uh, I don't know where I learned that from I don't know if I've learned that through coaching or if I was just kind of born that way but you know that is why I think it's so important to work with a coach because they help us discover what are our life tools. Um, it's, it, it kind of reminds me of, um, I don't know if you guys followed the holistic psychologist on Instagram, but I freaking love her posts. And she talks a lot. She's just so real and grounded and down to earth. And she's always like, always talks about like, disappointment in life like oh so she talks a lot about people pleasing which really I can relate to and like that you know what it's okay to disappoint humans and like humans have to learn how to be disappointed in life and I, it just makes me think that like we can't live in this bubble right like there's going to be really hard moments that happen like we're going to experience loss we're going to experience like divorces sometimes or illnesses or job loss. And it's, it's a part of life. I don't know why it happens, but I'm sure it happens for a reason. And we're going to feel the feelings. We're going to be sad. We're going to be fearful. We're going to be disappointed. We're going to be angry. Um, but we have to trust ourselves that we can, we can get through those feelings and we can survive those feelings and that, we're going to make it through on the other side and that life's not, not going to stop and that that life can get even better for us on the other side. And um, so, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That was a lot. <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't cried yet. I've been crying a lot this week, so I might be cried out right now, but I don't know if that's, that's the crazy thing about grief is like literally one minute you're fine. And then the next minute you're on the floor sobbing and you like, you can't predict it at all. It's, it's like grief is such a beast. <laughs> so I'm sure like maybe an hour from now, I'm just going to be like pissed off and angry or I'm going to be sad. I'm going to be something like it's, it's just been a, a roller coaster of a week, but um, I am, I'm really proud of myself for showing up and, um, I really do feel like I led some great, you know, coach training classes for my students this week. I even got some really good feedback from the students of how supported they felt and how excited they are to start the journey with me. And um, so, yeah, I just I'm proud of myself for showing up even when it's hard and and I'm not ignoring my feelings. I'm not numbing my feelings. And even just recording this podcast episode right now is a way to honor and process my healing and my grieving process. And I know that some people like to disappear and they like to hide when things are hard. For me, I like to, I like to talk it out. Um, I find that the more that I say things out loud, it normalizes things for me and it reduces the shame. Um, there's a lot of shame around miscarriages and I felt that pretty quickly as soon as I, I started telling a few people and I was like, wow, this feels really weird to say this out loud. And like, maybe I shouldn't be talking about this. And is this okay to say this? And then I was like, like, no, we need to be talking about this. Like, you know, there's so many women and, you know, even men that are going through it, they're not personally going through it, but they're, they're losing their kids too. They're losing the idea of a future child a future family and like there needs to be people out there talking about this kind of stuff so that way it like it has been really lonely and isolating this week even though I know how many people go through miscarriages and I've even had so many people speak up and say like yeah I went through that too um and you know I I can understand what you're going through and when I went through my miscarriage and uh, but if it, like man when you're going through it it's, it's really lonely. And I felt that same way with the divorce and the job loss. And I'm like, I know I'm not the first person to go through a divorce or the first person to get fired for my job, but man, like, does it feel fucking lonely right now? <sighs> 
also, I don't think I have anything else to to talk about this topic. Uh, so, you know, to just wrap this up and summarize that you're going to go through hard things in life and you can't wait for your life to be perfect to say yes, to start helping others and to start becoming a life coach because otherwise you're going to be waiting a very long time. Um, and that you can help others even when your life is a shitstorm. And you just have to find, you have to start giving yourself tools to work with the hard situations, to work with the difficult feelings and to really start trusting yourself that you can get through this and you will get through this and you'll be an even stronger, more resilient person on the other side. You're going to be an even better coach. I find that some of the best coaches out there are the ones that have gone through the hardest things in life and have learned to overcome those challenges, right? Like people aren't looking to hire perfect coaches. People want to hire coaches that are relatable and that know how to get through life's challenges. And then I've just been lately, I've been so attracted, not like in a sexual way, but like just so attracted to different like coaches and entrepreneurs out there who are just so real with talking about the hard things in life. Um, like, so for example, uh, Dina and Oh, why can I not think of her name? It'll come to me. Um, but they are the creators of the Instagram account, Big Little Feelings. And they're a, a parent coach and a, a child therapist. And, oh, Kristen, Dina and Kristen. And they just started a new podcast after dark or <laughs> after bedtime. And I freaking am like just eating up all of their episodes right now. Because like in one episode, Dina talks about how she's on the brink of divorce with her husband. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've never heard, like, you know, you hear people talk about like after they go through the divorce, but they never talk about while they're in it or right before it. And it was so raw. And then there was an episode on Kristen talking about her miscarriage two years ago. And that was very real and raw. And I just had like so much respect, like, holy cow, like, they're so brave, they're so courageous for, and they have like millions of listeners, right, like just putting their stories out there and like showing the world that you can still be so successful in what you're doing, and yet still go through these hard things in life. And then I am getting ready to work with a new coach. And we had a kind of like a little mini sample session the other day and she opened up to me and said that she recently got divorced and is single now and I just like I had a feeling because I follow her and I was like man I feel like I feel I think she's I don't think she's with her husband anymore and like her just being so open and honest and not hiding it and just owning it right owning her story like I was just like I'm in I want to work with you. Like, you're amazing, right? To like, just be like still showing up and serving in her coaching business yet, like, you know, navigating this divorce. I don't know how hard it's been. She didn't really get into details, but like, like those are the, the kind of people I want to follow. Those are the kind of coaches I want to hire. And you know what? That is the number one reason why people hire me as their life coach. And I was actually going to create like a whole podcast episode around this. <laughs> I, I, I still might, I don't know, or maybe I'm just creating it right now, but I was going to call it like the number one reason why people hire me as their coach. Um, the feedback that I always get is people are like, you're so real. You're so raw. And I realized that I, when we're, we're real and we're raw about what's going on in our life, that creates trust, right? Because we're not faking it. We're saying like, this is how it is. This is what's going on for me. And that trust is the number one ingredient in sales, right? So 
when you show up in this really vulnerable way and you trust yourself to show up in this way and you know that your stories and your messages is going to land in the right way for certain people, um, it is just such like a magnet for your ideal client. And it, it might not be for everyone. Like, I don't know, maybe some people are listening to this right now and they're like, okay, Krista, like, yeah, it's, that sucks. I'm, I'm really sorry for you that you're going through something like this, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't feel called to join your coach training program. I don't feel called to hire you as my coach and, and that's okay. That's fine. Like, I'm not going to be for everyone, but some of you are going to be like, oh my God, like I've never heard someone be this open and honest before about going through a miscarriage or or talking about their relationship struggles and like I want to work with her I want to be in that energy of someone who's so raw and honest in their truth in that way and I want to do the same thing in my own life or you know like so I trust I trust that there's a reason the universe was telling me to share this and there's people out there who need to hear it and to, um, and that's all I can do. <laughs> it's, it really is practicing just tr trusting and surrendering and, and letting go and, and knowing that you'll get the outcome that you want. Even though it might not show up in the way you want, you always get the outcome that you want at the end of the day. So. All right, everyone. Well, I think I'm going to sign off. Um, like I said, I do promise you I will create a whole another episode soon, just really diving into the details of the whole miscarriage process. Um, so that way, if you've already gone through one, if you're going through one, or if, you know, maybe you do go through one in the future, I, you know, obviously would never wish that on anyone, but it is super, super common, especially after the age of 35. Um, which I'll be 38 here pretty soon, um, that, you know, you'll you'll be able to get all the details and the info for me and you'll get to learn more about it because it is, um, you know, when you, you separate the sadness of it all and you take a step back, um, it's a really interesting process because it's all just nature, right? We're, we're all animals. It's all, it's all mother nature at the end of the day. And it's really... Um, just interesting how it all happens. So, okay. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next episode. I'm so grateful that our paths have crossed at this time. And if you're ready to up-level your coaching skill set and learn how to confidently coach at the transformational PCC level in order to help your clients get bigger breakthroughs and better results, then join our Born to Coach Training Academy at buildyourlifecoachingbiz.com forward slash certification.